Yep. I bet you never even knew having a remote control history is a thing, right? But uh, for me, that's predominantly cars. And anyone from the 90s is going to recognise a BT's bag. We are going to be talking about some Tamiya bits and pieces. Um, I'm doing this basically because there's an online remote control car car show happening because we're all in COVID's confinement. But that's all right. Um, yeah, we'll get to that because that is my very first Tamiya car from... 1990-something, and uh, it has a link to a particular film that I absolutely adore, and uh, yeah, we'll come to that. Anyway, first, a bit of history. So here it is, the famous two-star logo of Tamiya. They are the Japanese model company that basically taught me all about cars, and if it weren't for them, I don't think I'd be half as interested in real stuff as I am today. Secondary school, probably 13, I started racing at a local club, and uh, I was that cool that I even had my 16th birthday cake with my mini on it. What other 16 year old could say they had a load of models in their bedroom? I mean, come on. Here I am looking absolutely terrified for some reason when I used to do national racing of these things. So um, yeah, I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Remember, I am still the coolest guy you know. So of course, the great thing about them is they are so realistic and they actually do share a lot of components with real cars so this is my little mini collection she was a 90s rover mini little cooper s with the wide arch and she looked the same as all the other models so loved it why did this get me into real cars well they've got real suspension they have real alloy wheels on hubs they've got a proper little chassis albeit this one's a bit blingy now You've then got really clever little steering bits. It's just as a real car would be. It's fantastic. And unlike the ones I used to race, the Tamiya stuff just had brilliantly detailed bodies, stickers, and you had to paint them all. In fact, the paint was probably my least favorite bit, but um, let's have a look at that process. So you start off in the bath, unknowing to your mum, and you have to wash the little clear Laxan body. And then you spray the body on the inside, the chosen color. Cut out all the tiny stickers and uh, stick them on. And after only about two or three days, you end up with a wicked looking model. Wheels, body, all the electrics in. It was great. These days, I mainly just collect them. I do like looking at the box art. And I was very lucky about a decade ago to find a boxed, unused 1994 Rover Cooper. There might be a brick in it, I do not know. I do, of course, have some fun ones, which I just tend to buzz about the park. That's a lunchbox. Most recently, in Japan last year, I did drag Ruth to the Tamiya store. Ah, uh, sand scorcher. For the haircut alone, it's just worth showing this again. Wow. Right, so that brings us up to what is in the bag. And uh, in fact, hang on. Hey, that's better. Uh, it might be the wrong way around. I don't know. Alas, the bag. So, let's have a little look. Now, it's been a few years since I've opened it. And uh, in fact, before I do that, the nostalgia already kicked in and I picked up the charger. So, parts, some gears, interesting. Of course, and ACOMs. I always felt snobby against Butaba. Um, batteries. Okay, here it is. A Tamiya Jeep Wrangler on a CCO1. Let's have a look at this in more detail. such a nerd so it looks like I've got the light kit on it I'd forgotten that and this is what I mean by learning about engineering so here you've got big old damper wishbone nice suspension travel on the rear you've got this line of live axle set up and electronics wise that's the speed controller like a resistor that's where all the heat goes and there's your motor looking at the underside now it is a four-wheel drive car so there's your power output Prop shaft to the rear diff. Diff's basically me. I won't bore you. Look it up on YouTube. It's great. Um, really, really fun stuff. Loads of suspension travel. 
Loved it. Mmm, diffs. Last page, always the best bit of any build. So with such impeccable car taste now, you might be wondering why on earth is my first one a Jeep Wrangler? Well, the livery probably gives it away. I was and am a massive Jurassic Park fan. Yes, it does slightly hurt my soul that I painted it the wrong colour. It is definitely not sand beige. This is a bit more grey. However, due to uh, door handle position, it's also the wrong model of Wrangler. So that's what's helped me out. Maybe it's for um, the Lost World or something like that. But that is basically why I love Tamiya. And yeah, many, many great memories. So um, see you later.